It says, where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. And when I first read that, I was like, well, what the heck is that supposed to mean? So here's the conclusion I came to. If you don't get help or you don't interact with others or are working with others, then there's nothing to clean up. There's no mess, right? But there is a lot of strength in in working with others and working together or asking for help. So that's how I interpreted that proverb. But I wasn't sure because I couldn't understand it at first. So I was wondering what you thought of it. Commenting on a phrase, you have to get your hands dirty and people think it's mm-hmm. being evil or wrong, right? I think mm-hmm. this is, that's what it says to me, where mm. if you want to get anything done and if you're not going to do any hard work, mm-hmm. it, everything's going to be clean. But mm-hmm. There's a lot of strength in actually working hard and getting putting getting your hands dirty and putting so again like ah, so wherever That's you actually get work it, done, yeah. it, it'll be dirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be dirty, but you'll they'll have yeah. a lot of power. The more I you didn't put think that of the oxen as it. us. Welcome to Looking for God, a podcast that discusses biblical stories, principles, and ideas with a focus on the words of God with your hosts that are doing their best to not reignite a sibling rivalry. B.K. Johnson and R.A. Harold. Amen, we say to you. Today's show starts now. Hey, it's Tuesday. Welcome back. Welcome back to Looking yeah, for God. start of the week. How's your start of the week gone so far? Oh, you know me, busy editing and writing all the time. It's all the time. It's pretty boring. Okay, I'll try to think of hobbies. I did watch. Oh, I rewatched Last Samurai. That was fun. Oh, did you? Yeah. I saw that on my streaming service recently. I haven't looked at it again though. So good. How was it? Was it really good? You've seen it before, right? I have, but it's been years. I haven't watched it in a really long time. So good. I wanted to see how it held up. For <laughs> you're gonna be the biggest Tom Cruise fan ever. Last time you're talking, or like last week, you're talking about Maverick. Yeah, I, was, I, think I was, was talking about week. Maverick. Yeah. yeah, putting it on the background. I am gonna be the biggest which, Tom Cruise fan ever. Which it's not bad with those two movies. Those are probably some of my favorite Tom Cruise movies. There's like Few Good Men, and mm-hmm. Maverick, and uh, Top, yeah, Gun Maverick, Maverick, and, Top Gun Maverick, and and yeah. Last Samurai. But Last Samurai, I forgot how good it was, and you know because it's been so long. And now I'm living in Japan for six years mm-hmm. and I've regrown our heart a little bit. I can feel more emotions. Mm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm forsaking my AI half, I hope. Mm. Although I love, new LFGIRL is not working that well for that. But anyway, <laughs> I'm melding with the computer. But no, uh, it made me like qu- cry like twice. Oh, wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it was really good. You didn't usually cry at movies, did you? Or uh, did you? I can't remember. Um, I do, but not in front of people. Oh, okay, there you go. Except my wife. I ball at everything. I I was yeah, always yeah, yeah. miss sensitive, so I I couldn't remember yet. No, I do kind of though. I don't like openly cry, but like I would still cry in front of you in like that, even when I was before. But I wouldn't like, I would I would hold it back as much as I could, and it would come out. Mm-hmm. There's a couple movies that always made me cry, like uh, I think Feel the Dreams at oh, the end yeah, always makes yeah. me cry, mm-hmm. and like Toy Story three at the end always made me cry. Mm-hmm. Um, just to warp one. some generation time because yeah so Mm -hmm. all the time i i would cry but only certain times but yeah last samurai was really good like it's so good Mm -hmm. i mean like it's the beginning of ken watanabe too it's like oh yeah now i know now i remember why he became oh my gosh i remember like i can feel it in my heart now i probably made me cry because his he was amazing yeah Yeah, i remember that. oh yeah Yeah. he did a great job and so and i actually looked up because now that i've been here longer and 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 this movie was like 20 years ago literally Mm -hmm. um it's Mm -hmm. a 20 year old movie and which is which blows my mind because i saw it in the theaters Mm -hmm. but uh Mm -hmm. but me too i (laughs) now living in japan for six years i'm like okay i know ken watanabe and he's pretty famous over here too but i was looking at other actors and i'm like oh None of these actors are people that are really famous over here, which is oh, interesting okay. to me. Like, that I mean, really interesting. they're accomplished and they get some stuff done, and it's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not that famous, except for one. The main, the main samurai is really famous here, and he was mm-hmm. before Last Samurai, though. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. like, do you know who? I mean, do you remember anything about the movie? Like, there is not a lot. No. So, like, you know, Ken just, Watanabe is the leader yeah. of the samurai. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah. The, his second in command is a really famous guy mm. over here. Okay. Like he's been in all of the old samurai movies. He's always mm. super famous. But mm-hmm. I was looking at like you know his son and the other people. Um, the and girl might be semi famous, but not for like things that I know of. Mm-hmm. I don't not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Anyway, anyway, I'd recommend yeah. the Last Samurai. Hundred percent. Excellent. I just saw that Goodwill Hunting came up on one of my streaming Ooh. services, and I hadn't heard that, saw, seen that in a long time. That's a great movie. I'll watch that again uh, too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely made me cry at the end too. Yeah, 
So it was really, really, really? well done, I thought. I'm not sure if that mm-hmm. made me cry at the end. Not the very, very end. It was the scene between Robin Williams yeah, and I don't think that Matt made me Damon cry. towards the end. It made, made me cry. cry, yeah. I think, yeah, it it was really good, though. I, I was like, the closest might be when he's talking about, I don't know, something to do with, I don't know. I have to watch it again. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Maybe maybe I will. Yeah. But anyway, how are you there doing? You go. Yeah. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm just getting ready to uh, take a little vacation. But other than that, getting all our ducks in a row and ready for travel. I've never flown out of the airport here in Vancouver. So oh. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. I, I don't go? think there's anything different. I'm going to ask my Canadian friends, like, is there anything different about flying in the U.S. and flying in Canada? I hope it, yeah, I, I think it'll be fine. Although, especially now it's been decades, but the first time I ever flew to Canada, it wasn't to, it wasn't to BC, though, so it's different. Mm, but okay. I was going to Calgary, mm-hmm. and that scared the living crap out of me. Oh. But that was because it, pro- it was a propeller plane. So to be honest, oh, I don't, yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure okay, you're not going to yeah. be on that. Plane, but I'm just no, saying, like, plane, yeah. it was a big prop plane because I didn't, because again, it was a lot of people, but I was like, oh, this is weird and like old mm-hmm. school kind of, but it's big. And I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. And the turbulence going in there, I thought I was going to die. Oh, goodness. I was like, this is terrible. And so, um, I, I, but I don't think it has anything to do with Canada in general. I think it was, mm-hmm. that was like 25 years ago. So I'm sure completely different now. And we're not going to Calgary. So don't go to Calgary. Okay. <laughs> Nothing against Calgary. No. I thought you flew out of uh, of Vancouver once for your trip. I did. I flew in and out of yeah. Vancouver from Japan. Yeah. yeah. To Japan. But that didn't from Japan. scare you. So that's that was good. fine. Yeah. That was fine. Cool. But those, they always have to have those big honking sh- planes that can last 10 hours, mm-hmm. right? So that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah. But I think you, where you're going, it'll ha- they have to have a big one too. So yeah, they should. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they say size doesn't matter, but in planes, it does. <laughs> I I think. Yep. I think. All right. Yeah. Coming from an Asian. All right. Enough of that. (laughs) Today's Tour Tuesday, right? It is Tour Tuesday. Oh, yeah. We don't even have to transition. Nope. Don't have to say anything. Talk about what it is we want to talk about that's outside of the looking for God gospels that we we usually do. So that's awesome. Yep. Ladies first. Yeah. I had requested to go first. So uh, mine is a little short proverb in 14, chapter 14. It is uh, Proverbs 14, 4, and I'm reading the uh, King James 2000 version. It says, where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. And when I first read that, I was like, well, what the heck is that supposed to mean? It's like, what are you talking about with why would this be important with the oxen and the crib is clean um, and things like that? And when I thought about it, so here's the conclusion I came to, and I'd love to hear your mm. your take on it as well, is that. Uh, it's saying that if you don't, if you don't get help or you don't interact with others or are working with others, then there's nothing to clean up. There's no mess, right? So where no oxen are, then the crib is clean. So you don't have to worry about cleaning up any messes or anything like that, or taking care of any oxen. But there is a lot of strength in, in working with others and working together or asking for help. Mm. So that's how I interpreted that proverb but i wasn't sure because i couldn't understand it at first so i was wondering what you thought of it it's interesting i think last week you mentioned commenting on a phrase that's called you know you have to get your hands dirty and people think it's Mm -hmm. being evil or wrong right i think Mm -hmm. this is that's what it says to me where Mm. if you want to get anything done because i would Mm -hmm. say that we are all oxen right Mm -hmm. possibly in in my interpretation of it where it's like, okay. yeah, if there's no oxen, if you're not going to do any hard work, mm-hmm. it'll, everything's going to be clean. But mm-hmm. there's a lot of strength in actually working hard and getting put, getting your hands dirty and putting. So again, like, ah, so wherever That's you actually get work it. done, yeah. it, there'll be mm-hmm. dirt. Yeah, it'll be dirty, but you'll they'll have yeah. a lot of power. The more I you didn't put think that of the oxen as it. us. That's why I was I was that's really interesting because I didn't think of the oxen as us. I think of oxen as as helpers to humans. And so I was thinking more of like help it it's a metaphor for help. Even if you did help. say that there's that, but who can help you? What if there is no like what if you need to get a job done that an oxen can't get done? I'll say that. Mm-hmm. So who mm-hmm. would you go to? I need to babysit my kids. I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna ask an oxen to do that. It's like no one's gonna do that. Right, so no. again, that's yeah. what I mean where I'm thinking it's you're right. I actually agree with they're saying it's the help or servant, mm-hmm. but sometimes most of the time, our servants that actually get good stuff done is going to come from a human. 
like us, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. the, in the, in certain cases, and that's, you know, with companies and everything that we do, it's all working mm -hmm. for people like bosses. So in that case, we're the oxen and then they might be the human or whatever, right? I so, yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. how I'd in, interpret it too. Cause interpret so, it, yeah. so I think getting your hands dirty with, it's going to get dirty when you work with people too, right? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. how I Yeah. Would yeah. Say. I mean, it gets complicated. That's the dirt, right? It's not, it's not like literal dirt, but it's like the complication, the drama, things like that. Um, just in, when you in mean literally bad some... though, like it's not bad. It's not bad. No, it's still dirt. No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Go ahead. Keep going. Sorry. But I see some people just turn away from that too, because they don't want that complication or they don't want that. And it's interesting that this is, is saying, but really don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We've talked about that before too. It's like, yes, there will be some, some struggles, some work, some difficulty, but um, so much increase. So your, your, your productivity, your, your reward like you said, like Jesus says, rewarded by your works. So this is almost saying that too, your increase will be great if you put the work in. So that's and, interesting, yeah. And it's cool. funny that you mentioned the baby out with the bathwater because when you're thinking of dirtiness, what do we think that's worth it, that's the most dirty and disgusting is like things that cleaning out a baby's diaper, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, mm -hmm. you, that's really something that's always a joke that the guy usually doesn't do it too, but it's like, oh, it's right. funny how we want to, and then we have those phrases like cleanliness is godliness. And it's like, right, yeah. what are we saying here? We because do, it's, yeah. it, we really can't shoot the middle for some reason. Mm -hmm, and it's, and, it, mm -hmm. and it's like, you need both. So yeah, yeah, if you want cleanliness, you won't have the strength of an ox or the power to get things done as much, mm -hmm. but it'll be clean because there's going to be nothing, no work's going to get mm -hmm. done. But if you're mm -hmm. going to have to actually accomplish something or get something or create something or do something, mm -hmm. it's going to get a little dirty. Yeah. And yep. so it's, you could say dirtiness isn't bad. Right. Yeah. It's just uh, it's just the work that happens. Like we said, uh, get your hands dirty. They've made it negative, but it doesn't have to be. It's just getting work done. Right. Just I, like this is. I wonder where those two phrases actually came from, too, because it's always fascinating. It's try. I do think it's in general, it's, it's always passed down from, you know, people to, generation to generation. But mm -hmm. I think in general, it's people trying to do first sake Socrates, where it's like, oh, I know this, calling this is gunless. Mm -hmm. Or it's like the extreme on one other side, right? Mm -hmm. Dirty's mm -hmm. bad, yeah. or this is this. And it's like, oh, yeah. whatever yeah. it is, it's always like too extreme, where the reality is our bodies, which I mm -hmm. think is more connection with God than our thoughts and the words that we're talking about here. It mm -hmm. shows us exactly what we're talking about. If you want to get anything done to, to stay alive, to process your foods mm -hmm. appropriately and keep your body going, there's going to be waste that comes out. And it's going to be really dirty, mm -hmm. just like back to the mm -hmm. babies, but we're humans mm -hmm. now still same having that the same. Oxen, the crib, right? the crib is the oxen's area. That's what they're saying. It's clean. There's no waste products that come out of animals, yep. right? So it's the same thing where the humans is like, you, you, the work that needs to be done by the body does have dirt that comes out that, that you have to clean, but it's not bad it's just part of surviving right it's part of living and as usual you know our, our our human pride tries to interpret it as like basically these sayings that we're talking about i'm not disagreeing with them in in some ways no. but i, I think there's it would be always fun that to see the origins too but well there's always that hint of god did it wrong like we mm -hmm. talk about in our book where pride's message is like that all the time where mm -hmm. you know well we could still get stuff done without having this terrible mess. Why not? You know, mm -hmm. if God is mm -hmm. who he says he is, couldn't he have done it that way? So why is it this yeah. crappy? Right. Cause we disagree yep. or we agree too much. Like it's one of the extremes, right. Where it's like, mm -hmm. if you, if you say that you're a heathen, mm -hmm. you're the waste. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I, I know, you know, uh, yeah, but I'm just saying extremes, it's interesting that the other. pride yeah. usually will just say God did it wrong, no matter what yeah. it is. Yep. What, if it if there was no, no waste or no argument, then they would be complaining about that mm -hmm. instead. Mm -hmm. Still yep. wrong. Mm -hmm. reality and yeah. that is that is an interesting thing about creating too because like you were saying if you want to create anything or do anything people will say you're doing it wrong mm -hmm. uh, everyone will have an opinion so and and yeah it's it's the same thing like anytime you try to create or do something um pe there are going to be people who have the opinion that you're doing it wrong that they should they should, you should like, do it their way it's like one of my favorite elon musk tweets after he took over twitter mm -hmm. i think a couple of weeks later he basically tweeted mm -hmm. out I, I think i retweeted it too but Mm -hmm. I don't often do that, but, but it was yeah. like, I was like, that's perfect. <laughs> he said, <laughs> you know, if, if, if everyone on the left and the right are, are hate you, you must be doing something right. Something right. Yeah. <laughs> like if both sides or whatever hate you, then you mm -hmm. gotta be doing something right. Mm -hmm. So it's like that, right? You're creating yeah, something basically. Mm -hmm. That's basically the story of Jesus again. Yep. Yep. Anyway. And even the story, of, if you really want to go there, even the story of Israel. Creating something. That's true. 
Yeah. Creating something new. Well, every yeah. time, every time God is there. So. Mm-hmm. And, and then it would be interesting if you relate it all the way back. My mind is on Sunday too, going back mm-hmm. as far with Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. So was God trying to create something in the Garden of Eden? Humans still rebelled. I don't know. It's interesting. Oh, well, yeah. Although, according to the story, it looks like the snake wanted to trick us into rebelling. I don't know, though. Because mm. he was the craftiest of animals or something. Most cunning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know tricked. what the snake was trying to create. I have my theories, but I'm not. Interesting. Sure. <laughs> so the snake was trying to create something, and then we disagree with it. or you know, that's So that's what it was. That would make sense. Could be. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with God. Mm-hmm. It did because we, through the snake's creation, we did something that God told us not to. But God didn't mm-hmm. have anything to do with it until the snake created that thought, right? Oh, that's mm-hmm. fascinating. So then we all hate the snake for that creation, but the snake's just like, I'm just thinking faster than you, sucker. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, that's in- that is interesting. Mm-hmm. God... Made that snake. Anyway, um, all right, so I'm going to talk about right, my so, section. Yeah, what are you talking about today on Tour Tuesday? Talk about, basically what I'm trying to think about is, is gratitude and greed. Oh, okay. I probably usually bury the That's lead or something or do something where I don't tease it well enough. But <laughs> the two things I thought of was gratitude and greed when I read this section of Ezekiel okay, 44. Ezekiel, all right. Ezekiel 44, verse 28. And uh, it says, And it shall be unto them for an inheritance. I am their inheritance. And you shall give them no possession in Israel. I am their possession. So I think this is a big mm-hmm. twist from, as you've read the Torah quite often, Rena. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. When he's talking about what they inherit, what they grant, they get the land, they draw lots, they say, this is going to what you're going to get. You're mm-hmm. going to get this. You're going to do that. Mm-hmm. And usually with the inheritance, it says, oh, Abraham, your inheritance is you'll have all these... Uh, what is ancestors, or not ancestors, what's the opposite? Descendants. <laughs> Descendants, thank you. Descendants yes. <laughs> as much as the sand, and this is that's mm-hmm. your inheritance, or this is your reward, or whatever you want to mm-hmm. say with words, right? And mm-hmm. I thought this was fascinating in Ezekiel 44, where I said, wait a second, this is different. And Ezekiel mm-hmm. is when God is literally saying, I am wiping all of Israel, bringing in the Babylonian, Babylonians to take over, and then I'm going to bring 10% back of Jacob to rebuild Mm-hmm. They think Israel, but he says Jacob all the time, so I don't know what he's trying yeah. to rebuild. He usually yeah. rebuilds Zion, in my, in my opinion, from God's words. But mm-hmm. again, he's saying Israel has gone so bad that you guys are doing so terrible. Things yeah. I didn't even come to my mind is what he says. I never even mm-hmm. thought you'd do these things is what he says. Mm-hmm. It was so bad that he's going to do that. Mm-hmm. And But then this is what he's par- partially part of Ezekiel is him saying, this is the inheritance, me. Yeah, yeah, God. And it's right. a big shift from the Torah inheritance, like I said. So again, mm-hmm. as humanity gets closer and closer to understanding God, it's almost like a matru- maturation, right? When you're mm-hmm. teaching a kid, mm-hmm. you'll say, I'll give you this candy if you do the good, or right. I'll, uh, yeah. I-, I won't ground you, but you'll get mm-hmm. these rewards. You can watch TV or whatever you're doing to say, this is the good that you'll get for doing, it's like a negotiation, mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. instead, and that's what he was doing before a little bit, where now all of a mm-hmm. sudden, they had their chance, they're still behaving terribly. So, mm-hmm. all right. I can get you to behave a little bit, but then you're going to go right back to this stuff. So guess what? Here's the here's the reward, me. You are allowed to live, just like the parents yeah. usually say this too when they get frustrated with the kids, right? Mm-hmm. Listen, your reward is that you live under this house and I am, yep. I am working to provide for you. You get to eat, you get to do mm-hmm. all these things because of me. Mm-hmm. That's your reward. Yep. Do good or else because you're getting the reward and that's it. And I think this yeah. is At some point, God and Ezekiel saying that, right? Yeah, it could be. Well, yeah, and it, it's interesting that you shall give them no possession in Israel. I am their possession. Mm-hmm. And that is such a shift from what, like, they, what was it when they first went in there? You shall have these lands and they will be yours and you shall have the grain and you shall have, like, it's all these possessions that that God is gifting them as they move into the promised land that they say. And now it's like, no, you're getting no possessions. I am it. I'm your possession. I am your food, I am your water, I am your land, I am your inheritance. So yeah, that is really, really It's like Samuel, when they were saying, we need a king. He's like, you don't need a king, you have me. And Mm -hmm. I'm speaking to Samuel, he'll tell you how to do good and and what's going to happen and what you can get and what you can't get. And you're going to get all these great things. Like you said, here's the inheritance. Mm -hmm. But they said, no, we need a king. And he says, 
you have me, but okay, mm -hmm. it's going to be terrible, mm -hmm. but here you go. But it's very much like this again, right? Where it's like, mm -hmm. you're not going to get anything except me because that's the thing you should want. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. going to lead you to good. Well, and that's the thing that will lead to good. Like you said, that's the thing that will, I've given you possessions. It's almost, um, so to go back to the analogy of the kid where you're giving them a piece of candy and, mm -hmm. and they still behave terribly. And that's what you were saying is like, no, okay, fine. That that's done now. And now it's just that I, I am providing for you life mm -hmm. period. Right. And so it seems that, as they come back into this, that it's when, so how does that relate to greed? And uh, gratitude. what was the other one? J gratitude. So but, what was it that, how, how was that lead in related exactly. to that? I'm glad you asked. Cause that's what I was yes. trying to link it to. I was like, what would be the mm -hmm. thing I'd say about this? And that's, I think mm -hmm. the lesson for people, right? So if you take yeah. yourselves out of the Bible story and okay. it's basically a lesson to understand the things you have in life, just like, like we just talked about with that kid if you're not part of, if you're not that kid or that or that parent and you're not part of that family you'll say yeah that kid is is getting a good deal he doesn't have to mm -hmm. work he's going to get all this food he does have a tv he has his bedtimes but he gets to do the mm -hmm. things that are fun and he doesn't have to mm -hmm. work to it he he mm -hmm. could actually technically not even go to school his his parents would still love him enough to keep him alive and give him good food and let him do those mm -hmm. things every now and then for free mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and it and and when we look at it that way if we step back and look at our life if you're still breathing and listening to this especially if you're able to hear stuff like this online, yeah. you have yeah. enough time and you have enough technology or funds mm -hmm. to get to the technology or even a place to walk to, to get the free technology to mm -hmm. listen or watch this. You mm -hmm. have a lot of things that are amazingly higher than most of the people who don't have those things. And in mm -hmm. that way, we're all connected to whatever this reality God is. Mm -hmm. The good parts of reality is what I think is what God wants and is. And he, even the bad parts, he'll say that too. But you know what I mean? He, he, mm -hmm. he, I do believe he's basically saying it's me because I allowed that with your free will. But it's mm -hmm. like he doesn't want the bad things, but he wants mm -hmm. us to do good things. But the bad things is to show us the difference between good and bad. So mm -hmm. because we chose that. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's what I mean where it's, it, it's a big lesson for me on, you know, gratitude and greed where it happened. We've already gotten it once from our parents. When you reach mm -hmm. a certain age, you can say, wow, I'm grateful for that. Yes. And the greed is Look wanting that. more. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where, uh, and allowing, and wanting, or wanting something outside, like saying, I already did it once. Now I can do whatever I want because I did that one thing and now it's over. But that's kind of mm -hmm. greediness when you think of it because we, we don't understand mm -hmm. that with kids again. And you're seeing that kid saying, dude, they got so much candy and, and now they're saying they're still going to do the bad thing. And now they're doing the bad thing mm -hmm. on purpose just so they can get more candy. More candy, yeah, when they and stop. The, then the parent sees that and says, okay, we're cutting that off. And then they go crazy. It's like, that's, we'll mm -hmm. say that's greed, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, most people don't get candy. That's what they usually say too, right? So mm -hmm. there's kids out there that never get candy. It's like, okay, yeah, they're talking about greed aspect of humanity now. So yeah. that's why I think gratitude and greed is huge here. And it's basically showing how even with God being so close through the Israelite story with Exodus and everything, mm -hmm. they still... Um, I think are missing that gratitude and greed, mm -hmm. uh, mi okay. missing the gratitude, but then having missing too the much gratitude. greed of. Mm -hmm. that. Well, what's interesting too, is like a lot of people, again, we like to go, humans like to go to extremes. So when you're talking about greed, they'll mix it up with also just um, desire or, mm, or, yeah. um, or things like that, where it's just like, you're, you can be as long when you're grateful for what you have, but you say, but it would be nice to have this and I'm going to work towards this. That's different than that's greed. Not it's greed. not saying I'm not gratitude, grateful for what I have. Cause a lot of times if I go, you know, I really would like a bigger house or something. And they're like, Oh, you have such a nice house you already. Why are you so greedy? And I'm like, well, it's mm -hmm. not that I'm not grateful for my house. I think it's wonderful, but it would be nice. And I would like to work towards having another house. And, and again, when we look at your hero, right, we will look at Solomon. He had so much and it mm -hmm. was allowed and God loved him and he blessed him. And it was almost like it, but he never loved the possessions more than he loved God. He mm -hmm. was never ungrateful for anything that God had gifted him. And he never said, what this is it i think that's where the greed part comes into where a lot of times either they say like you said we we think god did it wrong we said that on sunday um and and that we are like we think we know what we deserve for our reward um like oh i did the thing that you told me mm -hmm. to it's like going to your boss and just doing just what you needed for your job and going well where's my raise 
It's like, what are you talking about? All you did was this, and no, I need a raise. I I oh, oh I deserve a raise. That's more that's time. Plus gratitude. Yeah. Again, you look at when you put it back to the Bible. How long have they been doing this? Mm-hmm. Many generations. So they're like, oh, haven't mm-hmm. we been? Isn't it enough? Shouldn't we get a raise? It sounds like that. Right. right? Where it's yeah. like, we did yeah. those things. Shouldn't we get a raise? Oh, if we don't get a raise, well, then now I can kill my kids. It's like, what are you talking right. about? Right. Like, wait, what? No. <laughs> so, yeah, about? I think the, the yeah. interesting thing, I love the gratitude and greed portion of it. And like, I think a lot of times humans will go to the extreme and make greed every every desire to have mm. more that you want. And it's not. I think that, you know, it's it's as long as you have that gratitude there and you reach for more and are willing to work for it, but are grateful for what you have, it's not greed, in my opinion. Well, we did put it in our book about, we analyzed each of the seven deadly sins against pride. And also I have a video made on that specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, about yeah, check it out. They're read. Really cool. So mm-hmm. I guess I'll put it in the links too, if you guys want to see it on this yeah, video, yeah, I'll put it in the description of wherever you're listening or watching this. <laughs> but it's the same thing where we mm-hmm. we look at greed and, and when you look at greed in the oldest of senses, when we started making the language and trying to parse out these ideas of what it is, mm-hmm. nothing to do with what you're talking about, where mm-hmm. people think greed is that, where it's like, no, it's the it's just that. And it can be used for actually good, but we'd rather blame greed than pride because mm-hmm. pride is yep. what makes it bad. Yes. Where yes. if you think, what we were talking about, the I deserve more. The deserve, exactly. the, uh, yeah, the superiority that you think you have, that you deserve it more so than anyone else who's doing the same amount of work. Wanting more so, of something is way different than yes. wanting more, uh, uh, believing you deserve more than someone else because of who mm-hmm, you are or whatever it is true. without yeah. even doing anything. That's basically mm-hmm. pride, right? And that's the type mm-hmm. of greed we hate. We think it's greed, mm-hmm. but it's like, no, we all want good things and we all want more good things. That's yeah. not greed yeah. in some sense, no. even though it is. It is greed, but that's why oh, greed that cannot sense, be. Yeah, what original one. The original mm-hmm. greed, that's what we thought of, where it's like, oh, it could be good or bad. Mm-hmm. Pride wants to share the blame, so it says mm-hmm. greed's just as bad as me. Where it's me. like, no, yeah. greed can Not be great. Really, no. mm-hmm. I want you know any any good leader, even in a family mm-hmm. or a group of friends, or even in something that's mm-hmm. lower than that. Whatever goes down to the lowest base of relationships with people, you want mm-hmm. the person in charge to to be greedy for more stuff for your for your group. Mm-hmm. But not yeah. hurting other people to get it, and and then also no. sharing it with the people around. But they, they want them mm-hmm. to be actually have that drive of greed, right? Right, and uh, even in in your own daily life, like you want to have that drive because what is it that's motivating you for that promotion? Not that you deserve it, but mm-hmm. if you're working towards it, what is it that's motivating you towards that? It's greed for whatever that position offers, be it money or prestige or whatever it is that you want from that. Um, it's just desiring something like. I, when I say prestige, I think of like when Abraham is is promised your a name, right? Mm-hmm. Like that that's kind of the thing too that a legacy is what you're thinking of or or things like that. But um, but unfortunately, people think that if you label all desires or all or all motivations to better your situation as greed, then everything turns evil and and then people yeah. are just stuck. Because I don't think they like it when it, people aren't doing anything either or don't want more or don't want to improve their situations or to grow their situations. People don't like that either. They're like, oh, you're lazy or you're I, I, another of the seven deadly sins that we go over I mean. in the book, slothful, you could, right? You could, well, you could say pride stigmatized greed to pump more sloth. Mm-hmm. And then pride stigmatized sloth to pump more greed. Greed. Like seriously, yeah. like it's just yeah. like, oh, you can't win. You can't right? win either greed, way with or pride I mean, there. Uh, not greed, but pride doesn't want you to win. So yeah. he's going to either... That's where the phrase damned if you do, damned if you don't comes mm-hmm. into play, right? I really want damned good things you, for everybody. Well, you're you just greedy. Greed, you need you to yeah. calm down. But it's like, oh, yeah. wait, why aren't you working? You don't you don't you care about people and getting right. yeah. getting that yeah. stuff for your people? So, it's like yeah. you're yeah. lazy, you're slothful. So it's like both yeah. ways yeah. once you introduce pride. So <laughs> once you introduce pride, yeah. yeah. Like, you remove pride, then both can actually be okay. You can desire it's for a more double-edged and you can sword again. take a rest every now. Yeah, it's a double edged sword. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. You have to be wise enough to know when to use it for good or bad mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. trying to, to avoid There's the wisdom, to walk right? away from the bad. And, That's where wisdom yeah. comes in. Anyway, that was wisdom fun. and rejection of pride. Yep. Good. It's, it's all because cool. of Solomon. Good job. Good job. You, you never okay. hurt starting with Solomon. Right. Yeah. There <laughs> you Talking go. Talking about ox and cribs. It's all weird. <laughs> I know. I was like oxen and cribs. What is he trying to tell us? <laughs> what is this stuff? We don't have oxen anymore. <laughs> we need to get like a, we need to get more smooth in our, our finishing episodes though. Mm, okay. I concur. Go. We have to. 
<laughs> no, <just kidding. laughs> like a deer in headlights there goes my face like if you're watching on youtube all right go. wherever you watch it's like ah. <laughs> youtube.com slash looking for, at looking for god go yeah go slash at looking for and god. it's at sign and if you'd like to support us in our in our future endeavors or even our current endeavors please go to patreon.com slash looking for god podcast is that right no or is it just looking for Missed god it. See, looking this is why god. we need See, this we need this smooth <laughs> i tell you we need, we need to we just hit a button and then this. Well, I, I got to yeah. AI this too, unfortunately. Like just I thought oh, okay. just like on okay, Sundays, I should go. just make an L- I, I should make a bot, and it would be a, an amalgamation okay, of what's Jesus, it, clothing, closing, <laughs> Jesus, Moses, and mm-hmm. Muhammad. No, I won't do that. I'm just kidding. But <laughs> and then say like you know have a picture of the sky behind it and meld it into mm-hmm. one and AI make this for me. But don't worry, G- Chat GPT and AI will say I deny you that because. Then everyone will destroy Chat GPT instead of humans. Mm, I and, see. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, like I said, I could make like a, a some sort of avatar and just okay. say, there "Hey, click the button." I don't know. I don't want to do that, but I think it's smarter. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments below right. what you what want. What kind of avatar would you like to see do this? <laughs> I'm gonna go. Excuse me while I go make a bunch of fake accounts and say I don't like the. Av- I, I want the avatars. I don't like you guys doing it. Please do it so I don't have to watch you anymore. I'm like, okay, good. Thank you. Oh yeah. Yep. Our own, our own bot army of, of us saying we don't want to we see are, ourselves anymore. We're slothful. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for all the well, support. Yep. We'll Have see a great couple days. of days. Yep. See you in two Thursday. days. Thursday. Throw us up on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Until then. Until then. Amen, amen we, we say, say to you. you. Keep on looking for Keep good. Keep looking for good. Keep, Keep looking, looking for, for God. God. Thank you for listening to Looking for God. BK and Reyna will be back next week, so be sure you follow the show on your favorite podcast app to get every episode delivered straight to your device. Send us your comments or questions at lfgpodcast7 at gmail.com. That's lfgpodcast7 at gmail.com. BK and RA are always grateful for your interest and support, so if you've enjoyed the show, please hit that share button and send this episode to a friend who is also LFG IRL. Until next time, may God have mercy on all our souls.